Hello everyone and welcome to this new Unity tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to make a simple 2D game, Brick Breaker, in which we're going to go over the basics of Unity, scripting, shader graph, and other things, so let's get into it. First of all, we need to install Unity Hub, so let's go to the Unity website, download Unity Hub, and download for Windows. Once it's downloaded, I have it already, so I won't download it again. Install it, and you will be presented with this interface. Of course, you won't be having projects here, and the installation is not quite done yet, so you have to go to Installs and Install Editor. Here you, are, you will see different versions, so it's pretty simple, just uh, choose the latest LTS version. But for this tutorial, I'm using uh, 2021.2 version, uh, everything should be pretty much the same, so there won't be any problems to follow. Uh, creating a new project is pretty simple, Go click on new project, and these are different templates presented by Unity Technology. So what's the difference between them? 3D, 3D HDRP. Uh, 3D URP, 2D, 2D URP. So the basic difference is that Unity has different render pipelines. Uh, there are three pipelines to be exact. 2D and 3D are the built-in render pipeline. Uh, render pipeline is legacy pipeline, no longer used or supported, just there for compatibility with older projects. What we'll use now is 2D URP. URP is the universal render pipeline. It's a lightweight renderer, and there is the HDRP that stands for High Definition Render Pipeline, which is used for high fidelity graphics. We don't need that, so we're going with 2D URP. Here you choose your project name, so I call it Tutorial. And you ch I already have one named Tutorial, I want to create the project. And here you choose the location of your project. Once you're done, just hit create project and wait for it to be created. After that, the project will open. So we will have this interface here. The different windows you see here are the inspector, the scene view, the game view, the hierarchy, project view, and the console. Let's start by the scene view. It represents our level. Everything you put in your game will be shown here as well as in the hierarchy. Same for the game view, but it's how it will be shown for the player. Here we have the project view. We have two main folders, assets and packages. We won't be touching this packages folder. We will only work on the assets folder. Here you have the inspector. For example, if I select the camera, you see that we have different data here. Transform, camera, a nodule listener and a script for the universal and the pipeline. What these are is basically, let's create an empty game object here. You see that its inspector has a transform component. It's the default component for every game object. Everything you can do in Unity is done with a game object and different components. So to add behaviors to your objects, Simply assign other components to them, and they are crea created by scripts. And you can also change the layout here. So I don't like the default one. You can drag everything like that. And that's fine. Choose a layout that you feel comfortable with. That's okay by me. So you notice here that the camera ratio is not properly set. Go to the game view. You will notice here that it's set to free aspect, so put it to your default monitor's resolution. And if you don't see it, you can press this plus icon and you can create a new one, either by fixing the resolution or by uh, putting an aspect ratio. So I have an, uh, 1920 by 1080 pixels, and it's listed here. Make sure also to select the sync because it will limit the FPS, so the CPU won't be working too hard. Now we will create a few folders here to hold our data or our assets. 
So create a first folder, call it sprites. Another one, let's call it scripts. Another folder for prefabs. We will explain what prefabs are later. And another one for materials. Materials are how things are shown in the game. We will explain this in a bit. So to get started, let's go into our sprites folder and we will import a few sprites. I have prepared a few ones. And we will. I have prepared a few ones and I'll make them available in the description. So simply you can drag and drop your assets. Like this, let's start with a ball. And here you see in the inspector that we have different data. Let's uh, start with this pixels per unit, what it is. So you see here every grid cell is called the unit and this precises how many pixels are there per unit. So this ball here is 32 by 32 pixels. If I set this value to 32, it will, big, uh, it will be as big as one cell. Also, if I put it directly like that, let's apply the changes first. You see that uh, the edges are a little bit blurry. I want an arcade, an arcade effect for this game. So here in the inspector, let's change the filter mode to point no filter and hit apply. You see it's no longer blurry and we have this sharp edge. Now we want it to be, we don't want it to be bold white. So let's go into our materials folder and we will create a new material. So go to create, shader graph, URP and sprite and lit shader. The sprite and lit shader is a shader for 2D sprites, but it won't use light. So hit enter and let's name it. So we will call this one ball and hit enter to open the editor. So this here is the shader editor. We have here the blackboard. It will contain variables. Here the inspector is same as the inspector that we saw earlier, but is for the shader and a little preview of our result. So for the ball, I want a little light and shadow effect it's pretty simple to make. So let's get a UV node. UV is a texture with coordinates that will map to our sprite or game object. With this corner here, the bottom left will be 0, 0, and the upper right will be 1, 1. So all values here range from 0 to 1. And if I split it, we will get X, Y, and Z. They're called RGB, but they represent x horizontally, y vertically, and z in the depth. For 2D we don't have z values, so it's just x and y. Now for the shadow effect, let's get this one here into a remap node to change the values. By default it's like this without remapping. So uh, the dark area is too dark, we don't want that. So for, with remapping, you can change the zero values to something like, let's say uh, 0 0.2 or 0 0.3. Choose a value that you like. And also I want to invert it. So let's get a one minus node here and link it here. You see now that the colors are inverted. We will do the same for the Y value hit control D to duplicate. We want we don't want it inverted. Oh, sorry. So let's remove this one minus and link the G output, which is the Y here. To combine these two, we need a multiply node. Now we have this interesting light effect here. If I link it directly here, you see it's uh, a square, not a ball. So to fix this, it's pretty simple. That's because transparency is not properly set. So search for a sample texture 2D node. And here, click on this icon and look for the ball. 
Now let's get the alpha channel, which is transparency, and put it here. Now you see that we have a ball in our preview. Let's assign a color to it. So click on this blackboard plus icon and choose color. Drag it here. To apply color to a grayscale image, it's pretty simple. Just look for a multiply node. Link this one here and like that. It's black because the color is default, uh, default set to black. So let's put it to white. And the dark color is very dark. So we want to offset it a little by getting a simple vector tool here and uh, sorry, a vector tool and we will call it offset. We can't offset it with the UV node. That's why we will get rid of it and replace it with a tiling and offset node, which allows us to offset and tile the UVs. So let's get this vector tool and link it here. Now, if I save this asset, close this tab, nothing has changed in the ball. That's because we haven't assigned a material yet. So to create a material out of this shader, right click it, create and go to material. Let's call it ball and simply drag and drop it to your ball. Let's choose a color here, something like this. You don't have to choose the same values like me, just pick something that you like. And I will offset the shadow a little bit. Something like that is good. We will do the same for the player. So I will import this sprite here. It's a pixel, as we did earlier, set it to 32 pixels per unit and point no filter, hit apply and drag and drop it to our scene. Let's scale it up. So I have tested a few values, 250 and 25 here are good. Now we will create a material for it. So create shader graph, URP and sprite and lit material and we will call it player. Double click it to open it. And as we did earlier, we need a gradient, but just a vertical gradient here. So tiling and offset node, we will create a color, a vector to called offset. Let's grab this one here and link it to the offset. Let's split these values and get the Y value into a multiply node. And multiply it with this color. Let's change the default color to white. Link this one here and we are done. So close this. Create a material out of this shader. Create material and call it layer. Assign it by simply dragging and dropping it. Assign a color to it and offset the shadow a little bit. Something like that is fine. So uh, I think it's enough for this first video. I hope you like it. <laughs> Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. In the next part, we're going to create the blocks that we are going to break a spring uh, a script to spawn these uh, blocks. And uh, probably we'll get into physics and collisions. So see you next time.